Once upon a time, an extraordinary event occurred, a dream transformed into reality. My sister-in-law, Lily, and I found ourselves at the center of an amazing gift. A hopping sum of around $300 million and the stewardship of our very own company. The elation and astonishment we felt were beyond words as we celebrated the news of our windfall. It reached the ears of our colleagues. Lily, reveling in the moment, drew attention with her exuberance. Whispers circulated among the staff, attributing our newfound fortune to the benevolence of our father. Lily, in her pride, asserted her preference for subtlety, declaring, I don't make noise. The plot thickened when my husband was granted ownership of the company and a substantial sum of $3 million. The revelation elicited laughter from one of the workers, leaving my older brother and his perplexed wife, OSS. While my brother, engrossed in a lawyer-provided document, appeared pallid and fearful, his wife's reaction to the contents of the paper was a scream. I am Anna, 29 years old, entrenched in my father's business since my youth, witnessing him build a company from scratch. I understood the struggles even during its modest beginnings. Despite my parents' aspirations for me to attend college and carve my own path, my heart was set on contributing to my father's company. Reflecting on this choice, post-high school, Max, a seasoned employee, imparted valuable lessons, treating me as an equal rather than the boss's daughter. His mentorship equipped me with essential business knowledge. My brother, Thomas, two years my senior, pursued a college education geared towards business management, harboring aspirations to inherit the company and be its future leader. Thomas's friends admired his future role, anticipating an easy life as the next boss. Questions arose about potential conflicts with his younger sister. Thomas assured them of my disinterest in the finer things, depicting me as quietly working behind the scenes, married to Lily, who reveled in extravagance. Thomas indulged her desires, fostering the belief that such a lifestyle would elevate his chances of becoming the boss. However, Lily, upon encountering me at family gatherings, would mockingly remark on my lack of resemblance to the typical boss's daughter, expressing my contentment with a simpler life. I asserted that material luxuries did not define my happiness. Lily, unable to comprehend my perspective, chided me for seemingly lacking the ability to wisely manage wealth. My brother chimed in, echoing her sentiments, acknowledging my ongoing learning curve in the company. I admitted to not having all the answers. My brother, however, criticized my lack of confidence, emphasizing the importance of projecting authority to gain respect. Undeterred, I acknowledged that within our family, only my father and I held authoritative roles in the company. Despite the criticism from my brother and Lily, my mother offered reassurance, acknowledging the positive impact of my contributions to the company. My father concurred, but my brother and Lily remained unmoved by our perspectives. They distanced themselves from us for over a month, clearly upset by our differences. Reflecting on that challenging period, I suggested to my parents, Thomas and Lily can say whatever they want. Despite this, my brother and Lily continued their extravagant lifestyle, dining at upscale restaurants and embarking on lavish vacations. They aimed to maintain the facade that my brother was the future president of the company. During this time, my father devoted himself to expanding the business. However, one evening, he began complaining about chest pain. Concerned, I urged him to relax and promised to call an ambulance. In the midst of his distress, he pointed to a drawer, whispering, There's a letter for you in there. If anything happens to me, read it. The rest is for the lawyers. Unfortunately, he lost consciousness before the ambulance arrived and never woke up again, eventually passing away. My brother and Lily, away on vacation, returned a couple of days later, acting as though their delay was inconsequential. At the funeral, my brother casually mentioned, we're relieved we got back in time. Who would have thought that dad would pass away while we were on vacation? His nonchalant attitude left me taken aback, as if he didn't grasp that my mother and I were left to handle everything on our own. Seeking a private moment to address my brother, I asked, did you have a chance to come home earlier? He replied, I couldn't because I had already booked our flight back, showing no remorse. Later, 
Addressing the employees, my brother proudly asserted, thank you all for your help. From now on, trust me to take over my father's place in a good way. Lily chimed in, praising his dignity and expecting admiration. Annoyed by my brother's late arrival and arrogant demeanor, I guided them to the ceremony's meal table. Throughout the meal, my brother continued his proud act, questioning the food's quality. Attempting to calm him down, I reminded him that my mother and I had already discussed and approved the menu. I asserted my independence, stating, I don't want you telling me what to do. This is why people don't really understand what it means to be a president. His arrogance extended to ordering around the employees, including Max, a longtime staff member. I intervened, cautioning him against being rude and reminding him to show humility. Thomas, don't be so bold. They're not just mere employees. You should show some humility, I urged, attempting to reason with him. These guys should respect me more. I'm the president, my brother replied with a lot of arrogance. Lily joined in, saying, that's right, Anna. Stop talking back to Thomas, the president of the company. If you don't listen, he can fire you. He has the power. As my brother and Lily were making a scene, a man appeared and said, I'm sorry to interrupt. Your father asked me to take care of his inheritance. He was the lawyer my father had hired while he was still alive. I recalled my father mentioning a lawyer, and it turned out he had thought about what would happen after he was gone. My brother and Lily got excited when the lawyer mentioned inheritance. They welcomed him into the room with smiles, eager to get things done. Quickly, however, as the lawyer was talking, my brother started crying, saying, wasn't my father's inheritance worth 300 million? Lily was thrilled to hear this and exclaimed, 300 million dollars. That's so much money. Having a company with that much money is like a dream. When the employees heard this, they started whispering to each other. Lily proudly announced, everybody be quiet. This is the moment when the company and the $300 million passed to Thomas. Hearing this, one employee couldn't stop laughing. My brother had gotten hold of the will and was reading it beside Lily, who seemed puzzled about what was happening. As he read, my brother's face turned pale. According to the will, the entire company was supposed to go to the oldest daughter, Anna. He stared at the paper, shocked for a while, then started shouting, This can't be true. This is wrong. In a serious tone, the lawyer said, This is a will that's legally valid. My brother's voice became tighter and more strained, saying, I don't care about this. How can Anna be the president instead of me? Maybe dad was just getting old and confused. The lawyer continued, Yes, your father's judgment might not have been clear. A will made by someone who is not thinking straight might not hold up. Hearing this, I couldn't bear it any longer. I couldn't let these two people insult my dad, who was a good person. I couldn't let even family members bring down his reputation. The idea of my brother becoming the president seemed completely unthinkable to me. My words seemed to anger my brother even more. What are you saying? Are you trying to say I'm not good enough to be the president? I replied without hesitation, you're right. How can you lead the company if you've never really helped it? Don't be ridiculous, my brother protested. Lily and I even built a huge house that's fit for a president. We went to great lengths to make me look the part, I retorted, by building a mansion that's not suitable for someone in your position or by spending too much money on fancy restaurants. That's not good for the company's image. Money is important, but it's not the only thing. Besides, didn't dad cover most of the costs for the house and any extravagant lifestyle? My brother challenged, how would you know all that? I explained, just before he passed away, dad left me a letter. In that letter, he outlined all the money he had spent on you and mentioned that it would be considered your gift during his lifetime. So your share of the inheritance is practically nothing. Lily was alarmed when she heard this. Hold on a second. Is this supposed $300 million inheritance already spent? That doesn't seem fair if we got so little from it. An employee who had previously laughed suddenly stepped in and told Lily that the $300 million came from the company's funds, not from personal assets. I believe all of us employees here are well aware of that, the employee added. Can money from the company even be inherited? Lily wondered aloud. I informed her, no, it can't. 
The money from the company isn't meant for the family to inherit, so I'm pretty sure that your share, Lily, would be minimal. Lily was saddened by this revelation. That's really disheartening. I was shocked by the inheritance amount too. Oh no, $300 million suddenly, my brother stood up as if he had a sudden realization and shouted at the employees, do you really want your company president to be someone as plain as Anna? You should believe that I'm more qualified. I have the same kind of charisma that my father had. However, none of his colleagues agreed with him. Max stepped forward and began talking to my brother. Your father was a charismatic man who started the company, but you and he aren't the same person. What you're showing is arrogance, not charisma. My brother grew angry as the employee calmly refuted him. Thomas, you might be part of the company, but we rarely see you actually working, Max pointed out, growing frustrated. My brother argued, that's because I don't have time to do any of the regular work. I'm busy networking with others. I don't have time for tasks anyone can do. Max continued, networking isn't everything. Anna works diligently every day to understand the company better. She quietly handles her responsibilities behind the scenes. Max's words seem to resonate with everyone present. I feel the same sincerity in Anna as I saw in your father. Anna is the right person for the job, he concluded. Everyone at the company nodded in agreement, touched by their support. I said, thank you so much. Honestly, I'm surprised by the sudden news, but having seen my father's dedication to the company, I care about it just as deeply as all of you do. I look forward to your continued help, the employees clapped warmly, and I bowed to them deeply, encouraged by the applause. I spoke firmly, all of you here are important friends who have contributed to our business. Anyone who ignores your efforts is not fit to be an employee, let alone the company's president. Yes, even the president can be fired. My brother grew annoyed hearing this. What are you even saying? I'm your brother, I responded. I mean exactly what I said. You even mentioned that if you became president, you might fire me, he exclaimed. Ah, uh, how can you say this? I'm family. I remain steadfast. I can't keep an inefficient employee on the payroll just because he's related. This is completely absurd. He looked around, his face full of desperation, and pleaded for support from those present, but the employees simply stared back with cold expressions. Realizing he had no allies, my brother and Lily left the scene. After that, Thomas lost his job and relied on the small inheritance he had received. However, the funds dwindled quickly, and he turned to me, asking for a loan. Disappointed by my brother's lack of effort even after being fired, I firmly told my mother not to give him any money. His friends, who had once supported him, abandoned him when they found out he lost the presidency to his sister. Lily, who had expected to be the company president's wife, found herself in a tough spot. Eventually, they decided to sell their mansion. The money from the sale allowed them to sustain their lifestyle for a while. However, with no income, their savings diminished rapidly. They reached a point where they had nothing left to sell and couldn't afford their living expenses. When they tried to find work, no one would hire them due to their lack of experience. Thomas managed to get a part-time job at a convenience store, a role he was unfamiliar with. He faced criticism from younger part-time employees. Lily's situation changed as well. She couldn't continue as a full-time housewife. She joined a group of part-time housewives and worked as a cashier at a supermarket from morning to night, earning a modest monthly salary. On the flip side, I applied what I learned from my behind-the-scenes work to help the company. Max and the other employees collaborated with me, leading the company to steady growth. My brother's situation unintentionally strengthened the unity among the employees. I made a promise to keep working with my mother to expand the business. Our goal was to bring more happiness to my father in heaven.